Lesson 173. We're in the second week of our three-week review lesson coming at the tail end of our unit on percentage, wrapping up our course in these last couple of weeks. And I had asked you to do numbers 26 through 30 in Ray's lesson 80. So that's what we're going to go over today to start off our lesson. Let's go take a look at number 26. Okay, this first problem was one of those financial problems that we had worked with a little bit. We were back talking about interest and principal and amount and things like that. Okay, well, this is one of those uh, financial things where the interest is paid up front by, by a discount being applied to this particular thing called a note. So we've got this note for $50 that bears interest at 6%, and that's 6% per year and it's due in three years. It was disposed of by the holder for fifty dollars. Well that's that was done two years before it was due. So what rate of interest did the buyer receive for his money? That's the new buyer. Okay so we got two different people go, uh, involved in this problem. We've got the first buyer and then we got the second buyer. So the first buyer bought it bearing interest at six percent for three years but he sells it after one year goes by and he disposes of it for fifty dollars to the new buyer okay who has two years to wait for his money now this note is going to pay th the interest okay let's compute what the interest is going to be and add, the, add that onto the fifty dollars so what you should have done was you got six percent on fifty dollars that's three dollars that's per year so three dollars times three years. So that's nine dollars that this note is gonna pay out at the end of the three years. Fifty nine dollars. Okay, well this new buyer, he bought it for fifty dollars. Two years later he's gonna get fifty nine dollars. Not three years, but two years. So he's gonna get a higher interest rate than the first buyer did, because he's holding it for less time to get the same payoff. So his fifty nine dollars that he's gonna get So he's going to get $59 after waiting two years on that three-year note. And he paid 50 so that's $9 that he's going to get. And what interest rate is that going to be on that $50? Well, if he only has, has to wait two years, that's $4.50 per year. And out of the $50, then that's going to be an interest rate of what? 9%. Okay, so the answer to number 26 is 9%. That's the interest rate that this new buyer is going to get for his money. So he's making out better than the first buyer who was going to have to wait three years to make $9, whereas the second buyer only has to wait two years to make $9. Okay, well, that's the first of our problems. Let's take a look at number 27 and solve that one. So in 27, we've got a lady who wished to buy a certain number of yards of silk for a dress. If she pays $1 a yard, she would have $5 left. But if she paid $1.5 a yard, it would take all of her money. How many yards did she want? Well, to solve this, you would have been focusing on that dollar versus dollar and a half that she's paying either or. So if she pays $1, she gets she has $5 left of her money, but if she pays a dollar and a half, it's all gone. So that tells us that by that half a dollar difference, that wipes out the $5 uh, that she would have had left. So as many times as half of a dollar is contained in $5, that's how many yards she must be shopping for, that she must be, must be pricing. So $5 divided by half a dollar, or how many times does five, or one half go into five? And the answer is 10 times. So that means that's how many yards that she is wanting to buy. 10 yards. And that essentially is the answer to the problem. So it's one of those that we could do in our heads pretty quickly if we know what to compute. And by the way, if you went as far as finding out well, how much money did she have to start with, well, mm -hmm. that's fairly straightforward to find out. If it's 10 yards that she's buying, okay, if she had bought the 10 yards at $1 a yard and she'd have $5 left, that means she's got She's got $15, right? Well, let's check that against her buying price of a dollar and a half. If she pays a dollar and a half and all the money's gone, well, 10 times one and a half dollars, that's going to be 15. So 
that wasn't required to answer in the problem, but it's interesting to note that this lady must have had $15 to start with in order for this problem to work out. Okay, so based on the numbers that were given. But the answer to the problem is 10 yards. Okay. Well, let's look at number 28. So here, you had $5 taken from two-fifths of A's money. The remainder would equal B's money. Both together have $51. How much does each one have? Okay, so let's break this down. Number 28. Well, to start with, we know that both A and, me, if we, a and B, if we add their money together, it's going to equal $51. So we can put that down. We can just say A's money plus B's money equals $51. Okay, the other thing we know from the problem is that if $5 is taken away from two-fifths of A's money, you basically have B's money. That's going to tell us how much B has. Okay, so let's put down that little piece of information. So if, let's see, this is basically B's money, two-fifths of A's money minus five dollars. Okay, that's that's B's portion. Okay, that's what B has and then we have if we add that to A that's going to equal fifty one dollars. So we add their two two portions together. So B plus A is fifty one dollars. All of this is B's money. Okay, so we just took the facts that were given in the problem now we're going to use them to solve the problem. Okay, so how much does each one have? Well, let's work this out here. Now, since we got fifths here, two fifths of A's money minus five dollars, that's going to tell us what B has. A, his all of his money is going to be. We can just call it five fifths. So five fifths of A, that's all of A's money. Okay, so let's add two fifths and five fifths. So seven fifths of A's money. Now. If we subtract five dollars, uh, we're supposed to get uh, that. That's going to get us the fifty-one dollar total. So that means that let's add the five dollars in to get fifty-six. So see what we did? We added five dollars basically to both sides of the equation, both sides of the equal sign, to get that five out of there because that's what we're told in the problem. If we subtract five from that amount, then that portion of A's money, that's going to be B's money. So we boil this uh, thing down to seven fifths of A's money must be fifty-six dollars. Okay, now we can solve this for telling telling us how much A's money is. Okay, this means one fifth of A's money has to be eight dollars. So five fifths of it, which would be all of it, would be five times eight. So A must have forty dollars. All right. Well, that tells us right there, okay, that must mean that B has got what? $11, because they both have to add up to 51. And you can check that by plugging A's amount back into this part up here. Okay, what is two-fifths of A? Well, one-fifth of A is $8, two-fifths is $16. If we subtract 5 from 16, we get 11. So that checks out okay. So our two-part answer to number 28, A is A has $40 and B has $11. Okay, let's take a look at number 29. Here's our next problem. All right. If two-thirds of the gain be four-fifteenths of the selling price, for how much will three and three-fourths yards of cloth be sold that cost four dollars a yard? Well, to solve this, let's find the cost of the cloth first, and then that'll help us find out what the selling price is of it. So the cost we know is three and three-fourths yards times four dollars a yard because we're told that in the problem so that works out to be if you do the math on that that's fifteen dollars so the fifteen dollars is our cost okay that's going to help us find out what the selling price is because we're told what the gain is or at least we're given some uh, important hints about what the gain is two-thirds of the gain if two-thirds of the gain is four-fifteenths of the selling price, then okay, now we can find the selling price. All right, so let's put down this important piece of information here. So two-thirds of the gain, so if two-thirds of, let's just say, we'll call gain the G. If two-thirds of the gain 
is the same as two fifteen or rather four fifteenths of the selling price. We'll say the selling price is SP. Okay. So now that's an important uh, relation right there we can solve with. All right. So this means let's use what we've done before. Two thirds of the gain is four fifteenths of the selling price. Okay. This means that one third of the gain is two fifteenths of the selling price. So the gain is going to have to be three times that. And that's going to be six fifteenths of the selling price. See that? Using what we've done before with problems like this. All right. So six fifteenths, well, that can be reduced down to two fifths, right? So our gain is going to be two fifths of the selling price. Well, the gain is what we realize on top of the cost of what we're selling. So the cost of what we're selling has got to be three fifths of that selling price, right? Because three fifths and two fifths are going to make give us five fifths, which is the full selling price. That's what we're after. So we know what the amount of our cost is. It's fifteen dollars. So fifteen dollars represents three fifths of the selling price, right? Because Take our cost, put a gain on top of it, that's our selling price, and so that's going to be our selling price. So $15 is three-fifths of the selling price, so that means selling price has got to be, if you do the math on it, the selling price is $25. See that? So that's the answer to number 29 then, that cloth would be sold for $25 in order for that fractional relation to be true. Okay, that was number 29. Let's look at number 30. Now this one is just like number 13 that we worked out a few lessons ago. We've got a hare that is 100 leaps before a hound. So in other words, he's running ahead of the hound. He's ahead by 100 of his leaps. And he takes five leaps while the hound takes three. But three leaps of the hound equal 10 leaps of the hare. So how many leaps must the hound take in order to catch the hare? Okay, so let's look at those two comparisons there. Um, every three leaps of the hound equal ten leaps of the hare. Uh, but while the hound takes three leaps, the hare is only taking five leaps. So as you compare those two, you see that that means that for every three leaps that the hound is making, he's gaining five of the hare's leaps. Uh, on him. Okay, so if he's getting five leaps every time he's taking three, that means, okay, to get to cover, to close that gap of 100 leaps, um, how many times does five go into 100? So five goes into 120, goes in 20 times? Okay, so that means he's got to take those three leaps 20 times in order to close that gap and catch up with that hair. And 20 times 3, that's really the only other calculation that has to be done. So 20 times 3 is going to tell us how many leaps that uh, hound has to make in order to catch the hare. So the answer to number 30 is 60 leaps. That'll get him right up to that rabbit uh, in no time. All right, so those were the problems that were in yesterday's lesson assignment. And so today we're going to work on problems 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. So go ahead and work on these problems 31 through 35, and we'll go over the answers at the beginning of tomorrow's lesson.